Let's turn our Bibles to the book of 1 John, 1 John chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5. We'll look at verse 4, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. The title of the message is, How to Overcome Sins in Your Life. How to Overcome Sins in Your Life. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, the Bible says, For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Brother Richard, can you please pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we ask that you please fill Pastor Jay with your Holy Spirit so that he may preach unto us, Lord, that he may uh, preach unto us a sermon that will cut us up from inside, Lord, that way we can change our evil, wicked ways, Lord, so that we may be holy unto you, Lord God, for you are holy. Uh, thank you, Father God, for your only begotten Son, Lord Jesus Christ, who shed all of his precious blood to atone for all of our sins, Lord. Thank you that we are uh, saved by faith alone and nothing that we have to do on our end, Lord God. We thank you for the free gift of eternal salvation. Father God, uh, I pray that this message will prick each and every uh, individual's hearts here today. Lord, whether they be here at the church today or online listening, Lord God, I pray that this message uh, changes you from inside out so that we may be a better Christian to serve you, Lord God. Uh, help, to be, help us be reminded the day that we came to Calvary and that we ask you to forgive us of our sins, and that we repented of our ways, that we died in our flesh, and we rose again, and we resurrected with you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for redeeming us. Thank you for your resurrection, so that we may have salvation, Lord God. Father God, I pray that uh, any of the members that didn't make it today, for whatever reason, Lord, I pray that you please fill them with the Holy Spirit, comfort them, tend to their prayer needs accordingly to your will, Lord God. Father, I pray that you please uh, bestow your grace and mercy mercy here upon us, Lord God. Thank you that we have another day here. Uh, please convict us, help us to go out there and to preach your word, the gospel, unto all the lost sinners unto this world, Lord. Whether uh, we're tired or not tired, Please convict us, Lord God, to hand out a tract or to speak with our mouth that you have provided for us, Lord. And Father, I pray that we uh, continue to have faith unto you, Lord God, during these last days. These are dark times right now, Lord. We pray that we put our faith and trust on your word, Lord. Your word is the truth and the light in this dark world. The King James Bible. Thank you for the preservation of your word, Lord God. Please help us to hide your word in our hearts. And we pray for your soon return, Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray that you please bless this service, bless the fellowship that is to come, bless the teaching, Lord God. Fill the teachers with your Holy Spirit, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 It's a question that we have to ask on a daily basis. How do I overcome sins in my life? Because sin can easily take control of your life at any moment. Yes. Even at this point, if you're not guarded, if you're not alert, if you're not vigilant, if you're not sober, if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, you are going to give yourself to the devil, the world, and the flesh, ultimately having sin control your life. Yes. In order to have any chance to overcome sins in your life, first thing is that you have to get saved. Right? Amen. You have to get saved from hell. Amen. You have to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have to be born again. Yes. You have to be sealed with the Holy Ghost. And you're once saved, you're always saved. Woo! And that's the best part about being you, a Christian in this church age. And if you're not saved, there's no way you're going to overcome sins in your life. Because your father is the devil. That's right. I mean... If your father is a devil and he controls this world and he controls you, even though you have free will, yeah. what's going to happen? 
Whenever you have chance to overcome sin, you're going to give into it. Whenever you could have victory over sin, you're going to give into it. Because that's your nature. Unless you have a new man, unless you have new nature, unless you become a new creature, you cannot overcome sins in your life. No, so sir. don't fool yourself thinking that I could act like Buddha, I could act like Confucius, I could act like Gandhi, I could act like, you know, those hypocrites out there. Right. And, you know, okay, yeah, I could overcome sin. You can't. Every single person in this world has a problem. Yes. And if you don't have any problem, you're just lying. That's right. You could have billions of dollars in the world, you have a problem. Amen. You could be penniless, you have a problem. Amen. You could be in between, you have a problem. You could be the healthiest person in the world, you have a problem. Right? Every single person has a problem. And that thing is called sin. Yes. There's no perfect person in this world. No, and there's something that's going to hold you back, and that's sin. So again, in order to overcome sin, you have to get saved. You have to trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior to have even a remote chance of overcoming sin. We've seen many of the successful cases when drug addicts, when you know, people who are addicted to certain type of sin, after they get saved, they give life to the Lord, right? You know, Because even after you get saved, you don't give life to the Lord. So we have to have a distinction. You know, if you trust Christ, you're washed away from your sin once and for all. That's your soul we're talking about. You know, that's where spiritual circumcision comes in. Your body and soul separates once and for all. However, because sin is so strong, your flesh is so strong, your world is so strong, and the devil is so strong, if you do not take care of your sin problem on a daily basis, even Christians always lose many yes. times. But think about if you're not a Christian, if you're not in Christ, you have no chance. Harder. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You could be Mother Teresa and still burning in hell. That's right. Right? That's right. You could be Billy Graham and you could be compromising yes. your ways. Amen. And you say, oh, are there bases for it? Yes. Just look at their testimonies. Look at their biography. Look at their life. Amen. So being, trying to be good in your life will not, you know, help you overcome sins in your life. Yes. So we get that out of the way. In order to have any chance, you have to trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. And after you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, now comes the hard part, right? Every time we witness to someone, first question they'll ask is, now I trusted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Now what do I do with sin? Right? Because our physical body you know, will not have complete salvation until the day of the rapture. Right. You know? Then, until then, our flesh will still go through ups and down, and our physical body will continue to sin. Then how are you going to overcome it? Number one thing is that you have to realize that you do not have license to sin. Amen. Just because you're saved doesn't mean that you could go out there and start sinning. You know, Book of Romans chapter 6 describes it very well. Romans chapter 6 verse 1 and 2 says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. I mean, Amen. as stupid as a question it is, people will ask yes. just to justify their sins to justify their actions, right? Now I'm saved. I'm not going to burn in hell forever. Praise the Lord. I'm going to heaven no matter what. Then why can't I do anything I want? Bible says, God forbid. Yes. God said, no, no, no. Simple. I mean, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? I mean, if you trust that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, right? Your flesh is crucified with the Lord on the cross. Amen. You're trying to serve dead things. Verse 15 goes, what then shall we sin because we are not under the law? I mean, after you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're no longer under the law, right? Yes. If you haven't trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're still under the law. You're under condemnation, right? Yes. You're already determined to burn in hell. And again, you don't have choice. People are, you know, fooled by this false prophets and preachers out there that I have choice to go to either heaven or hell. No, you're already condemned to burn in hell. Amen. You have choice to go to heaven. That's it. Yes. Because if you don't choose heaven, 
you're already going to burn in hell. Right. There's no middle grounds anywhere. Bible says again in Romans 6.15, What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. God forbids it. God expects every Christian to live a life of holiness. Amen. That's what God wants. Yes. So you don't have license to sin. Amen. God wants to live a holy life. 1 Peter 1.15 says, But as which he hath called you is holy. And we know God is holy. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Not just your speech, your actions, everything, your thoughts as well, yes. your minds, your heart. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Amen. It also says it in Leviticus 11.44. Again, if you were fooled by many of these false doctrines out there where now you're saved, Sunday, you don't need to go to church. You could go out there and play golf. Now you're saved. You know, you could go out there and drink a lot of beer. Now you're saved. You could fool around with anybody. You're going to heaven no matter what. God forbid. Think about all those verses in Galatians, right? Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, thou shalt he also reap. Amen. Oh, oh, you think God is not a fair God? After you've gotten saved, you try to live a holy life, bring glory to the Lord's name all the time, compared to someone who really lives a bad testimony in a wicked life, even though they're saved, causing people not to get saved, but instead being a token for them to burn in hell? Mm. You think they're going to get the same reward? No. no, God is fair God. Amen. And people who say, you know what, I, do, I don't think God is fair. You know, you don't know God of the Bible. Yeah. Your God is probably the devil. That's, That's right. why. Yeah. You know, sometimes people get confused, Just right? And yeah. They're like, ah, you know, that God is so, how should I say, mean, yeah. right? Yeah. He lets, you know, AIDS to come to, you know, young children in Africa, whoever, wherever. Yeah. You know, if you don't know good and evil, Bible says you're going to heaven, no matter what. Yeah. And that yes. might have been a lot better result for any person to grow up and reject Christ, you know, than to go to heaven, you know, not knowing good and evil at a young age. You know, some, I mean, it's a heartbreaking case, but hey, there's a good ending to them. Yes. You know, I'd rather go to heaven any day of the day. I mean, any, yes. any, any day of the year, any day of my life Amen. than to burn in hell, right? Yes. Then you have to understand, Christians, if you are saved by trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you do not have license to sin. Yes. So don't ever think that I could justify sin in any way. Because if Christ is in you, if you're sealed with the Holy Ghost, right? Every time you commit sin, you know, you're defaming, defiling body of Christ. Yes. Even if, even if you had the license to sin, it's not something you want to do. No. I mean, do you want to, you know, put scars on your face? No. Anybody? No. Do you want to go to the mirror and get your knife out and then start cutting yourself up? I mean, we have some religions who does that and they think that they're becoming holy. You know, yeah. they don't. Yeah. They're trying to get saved by their works and they don't even know what they're doing because they're following man's tradition. But as Christians, every time you do not understand that, you know, I don't have license to sin and you do commit sin, all you're doing is, you know, cutting yourself up. Amen. That's why many of you have a lot of scars in your life already. Yes. Yeah. And don't tell me that, oh, man, this scar is good for testimony time. No, sir. It's not. I mean, especially after you've gotten saved. I'm sure it gives encouragement to other brethren, but at the end of the day, you sold something bad. Yes. Right. And then you're going to have to harvest it one of these days. Yes. Thank God that if you got to ride with the Lord and come to a quick conclusion that what I've been doing and how I've been living in sinful nature is wrong. So you get right, in the, you get right with the Lord. But many times, Christians go all the way. What does that mean? You see the end of your sin. 
If you are drinking, you're going to drink until you become an addict and you finish it. Yeah. That's how human flesh is. Yes. That's why the Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. Amen. And once you start, you can't stop. That's the scary thing about sin. When I realize that I don't have license to sin, then certain things I'm just not going to do. it. For example, if you realize that you don't have license to drive, right? We have young kids right here that don't have license to drive. If they were to drive, they could cause accidents, right? They yes. could be pulled over by a cop. They could go to jail or whatnot, right? Yes. And 90% of the time or more, young kids who do not have license, they're not going to drive. What's the reason? Because I don't have license to drive, yes. right? I mean, if you think like that when it comes to sin, you have a better way, better chance. Obviously, in the Lord, right? Don't yeah. trust yourself. Your foundation is Jesus Christ, Amen. and that's where your faith belongs. Then, like, you know what? I don't have license to do this. You know, the devil, you could tell me all you want. World, you could tell me all you want. Flesh, you could tell me all you want. But I can't do it. I don't have license. Yes. And I'm too fearful to do it. Amen. Godly fear, right? I fear God. You know, God did not give me license to do this, so I'm not going to do it, right? I mean... God did not give me license to, you know, be angry for no reason, right? So I'm not going to get angry anymore, right? God did not give me license to lust after people. So I'm not going to do it no longer, right? right? You know, I mean, your eyes like, hey, let's look at that person, that person. Let's look at this thing, that thing. You know, let's go to the phone. Let's go to the internet. Let's go somewhere. Yeah. But you tear your eye, like, hey. You don't have license to do it. Amen. You just stop right there. I mean, your feet wants to go to certain places. You're like, no. Yeah. Your ear says, you know what? I need to listen to certain things. But you don't have license to listen to bad music no more. No. Right? I mean, Christians, you know, one thing for sure is that you continue to listen to bad music. You're going to, you know, get your due yeah. no matter what. I mean, devil was what? Music director, yes. right? So... In this world, what usually unifies people when there's no language? It's music. You know, that's why wicked musics are popular everywhere. Even, in, even though you don't even understand the lyrics, your body understands it. That's why bodies move at those wicked concerts, right? That's why, you know, all this contemporary Christian music, so-called, yeah. is so dangerous. Why? Yes. Because if you drop the lyrics, it's what? It's all worldly beats. It's yes. worldly music. I mean, even unsaved, secular, Bible-rejecting people sees it right away. Hey, that's not really praising God. You're rapping, and you think you're praising God. You're doing rock and roll, and you're praising God. They look at you, and they laugh at you. Yes. Now, you're fools. Yeah. I, know, I know what's the difference between... You know, worldly music and godly music. Yes. That's why we sing old traditional hymns. Amen. You know, when people come to our church or any of the Bible-believing church that they go to, that first thing hits them. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's no projector. Amen. You actually take out a hymnal. Yeah. You turn your pages to certain things. Praise the Lord. And suddenly, your flesh and your soul isn't really moving. I mean, your spirit is praising God. Yes. It's like, oh, I want to, you know, wave my hands, you know. <laughs> I want to jump up and down. And we're singing Amazing Grace, right? It doesn't happen like that. That's why you do not have license to sin. Once you get that in your head, once you get that in your heart, and you practice it on a daily basis, then you're going to overcome sin. How do kids overcome desire to drive? By not doing it. Simple as that. How do you overcome sin? By not doing it. I mean, the answer is very simple, but it's one of the hardest things to do. Why? Even though your soul cannot sin anymore, your flesh will continue to sin. Let's admit it. Yes. Right? 
I don't care how holy you are, you're going to sin. Amen. You have to admit it. Yes. Like, I am going to sin. But he said, how much am I going to sin? I mean, that's the big question. Am I going to sin as much as I can? As much as devil wants me to? As much as the world wants me to? As much as flesh wants me to? Or am I going to sin as little as possible? Amen. Being faithful to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. When you break the law, you have to pay for it. Yes. When you break the law in here, you know, you have to pay for it. Amen. Simple as that. When you think about consequences that comes along with sin, you probably won't do it. If you could see the result before you commit it, then you know. But the funny thing is, God gave us the result already. God has already given us the future in the Word of God. God says, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. You have a lot to answer to at the judgment seat of Christ. Man, okay. You know, I really don't want to face that. You know, I, Jesus Christ is not the, some of the pictures that you see at a Catholic painting, right? That's, right. that's not real Jesus Christ. No. I mean... He is going to be like that, you know, dictator, authoritarian, you know, Amen. like all powerful, right? I mean, he is going to be someone you're going to be in awe when you see that person. Yes. yes. And your knees kind of drop to you. And you got, your knees kind of just drop. And all you could say is, Jesus is Lord. Amen. And if devil's going to just drop to his knees and say, Jesus is Lord, yeah. I mean, forget about it, you and I, right? Amen. And. When you have to answer the Lord, ask anybody who ever gotten in trouble with the law. And you're standing in front of a judge as an unsaved person or saved person. It's not the most comfortable place to be. No, sir. Because judge has the power to either send you to jail, give you probation, or get you scot-free. Yes. Right? I mean, thank God that, you know, you won't have to burn in hell because you have an advocate, you know, who saved you from hell once and for all. Thank you, Jesus. But that's at salvation. But after salvation, it all is going to be judged, right? You're going to be judged for whatever you've done, you know, whether it be good or bad. Then imagine before you turn your computer on, before you go to the website on your phone, think about it. I'm going to be judged for the site that I go to, site that I'm going to be viewing. And it's going to be played in front of many, many people. Yes. And judge is going to judge me for looking at that. I, mean, I think you'll think twice. Yes. Right? A lot of times, devil will keep you very comfortable. That's why, Christians, you haven't overcome sin because devil will make you as comfortable as possible. Devil wants you to be successful in this life, right? Yes. So that you could be comfortable. Yes. There are certain people, whether you're successful or unsuccessful, you're just always no good, yes. you know? You're always down, you know, you always blame God for everything. But there are certain people, when certain things go right in their life, they start forgetting God and they start giving glory to themselves. That's what devil wants. Devil wants a defeated Christian. Who's, a, who's really a defeated Christian? Defeated Christians are people who don't do anything for God. Right. Defeated Christians are who have bad testimony. Defeated Christians are who, when other Christians see them, they get defeated as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, they get down too. That's why fellowship is very important where you get admonishment, encouragement from other brethren. But however, sometimes it's the other way around. You go to church and all you see is a bunch of so-called Bible-believing Christians. They're always a down, Debbie Downer. They're always tired. You know. Don't get me wrong. If you work in you know, a graveyard shift last night, I don't expect you to be spree. Well, you could be, right? You know, springboard, jumping up and down. But you had, all, you had all day off to yesterday, you know, and suddenly you're so tired this morning because 
I don't know, you know, you stayed up to watch some movies, you stayed up to, you know, do some wicked stuff, Can't you know, then, you know, you have no excuse. Yeah. And then your excuse should never be, I studied too much last night. Really? You don't study the rest of the week? Yeah. Why is it that many children always study Saturday night the most? Mm. And then they're like, Sundays, I'm so tired. I study so much. Is that a... Do you want me to give you applause huh? no. for wasting all your time during the week and then you know, trying to not concentrate on Sunday, which devil wants you to do. Yes. Been there, done that. Right? That's why you have to listen to your parents and adults. Amen. They've been there, right? I've been there. We've all been there, yes. young people. You know, so don't be a... Don't be smart aleck and saying, you don't know me. Times have changed. Things gotten harder. No, it's all the same, right? Amen. <laughs> I always get a kick out of it when someone says, you know what? You know, if I'm in PBI, when Dr. Ruckman used to be alive, I'll be different. No, you'll be the same. If you're not diligent right now, you'll still be lazy over there. That's right. I mean, the what you do right now is what's most important. Don't think that change of environment is going to change you. No. You have to change, and the environment changes its own. Amen. Uh, unfortunately, due to many of the you know, media's coverage of people in general, they try to always blame it on people. You know? If it's because of that race, it's because of this race, it's because of government, everything. You know, we know it's not the best out there. But we still have freedom to preach and go out there, you know, spread the gospel. It always comes down to you, right? I mean, you don't overcome sin. It's because of you. Yes. And that's the key point. You still commit sin. It's you. I mean, it's, Bob Jones Sr., again, it's like one of his greatest lines. The problem is with you. It's not your mommy. I mean, your mommy could be an alcoholic, drug addict, or whatnot, but at the end of the day, it's you who makes the decision. Free will. I feel really bad for young children who have to grow up you know, without both parents, who have to grow up in a very you know, tumultuous you know, household. I you know, feel bad because you know, that's not the environment for kids to grow up in. But that does not give any of those kids to say, that's the reason I'm like this at the end of the day. Because especially if you're in a Christian household, no matter what, it doesn't matter. You know, your daddy is saved, but he's alcoholic. Your mommy is saved, but she's drug addict. You know, blah, blah, blah. But you got saved because, you know, they wanted you to get saved. Then if you are a saved Christian as a young child, young man, young woman, you have no excuse. We have a bunch of people here. They wish they had what you had right now so that they could have overcame sin a lot younger than you did. But you don't appreciate it. So what does that mean? It all comes down to the fact that Christ is not that important in my life. When you don't overcome sin in your life, you do not put Christ as number one in your life. If you really care about Lord Jesus Christ, you won't commit certain sins. You won't commit sin at all yeah. as much as possible if you care for Lord Jesus Christ. It's not about me preaching to you. It's not about people around you looking at you. No, it's just between you and the Lord Jesus Christ. If you really thought Jesus Christ was very important in your life, you just wouldn't do it. Amen. You know, like my license you know, it's the fact that I have Jesus Christ in my life as my Lord and Savior. Amen. And I have license to go to heaven once Woo! and for all. And I can never get that license to burn in hell. Right? Amen. Because if you don't trust Christ, you have that license. You can't get rid of it. You could throw away all you want. You have the license to burn in hell once and for yes. all. And if I don't have license to burn in hell, I only have license to go to heaven. Then think about it. Who issued that to me? No. I mean, licenses are issued by certain agency, yes. right? <laughs> so God gave me that license. Man, am I abusing it or am I really appreciative That's of it? Good. Am I really showing it to everybody? You know, we have brothers, you know, sisters, you know, you have zeal for lost souls out there. 
So what you're doing is, you know what? Here's my license to go to heaven. I think you should have it too. I want you to have it, right? Yes. That's all good and stuff. But outside of your gospel spreading life, how are you, right, brother? Yeah. How are you, sister, right? We see this good part of you inside the church, street preaching, wherever you are preaching the gospel. But outside of it, I mean, are you overcoming sin? Because I guarantee you, during street preaching, it's pretty hard to be overcome by sin. When you have 30, 40, 50 other brothers preaching the word, you're holding the sign, you're witnessing to people, passing out, it's pretty hard for you to sin. True. But however, you're all by yourself, right? Come on. It's just you and the couch and the bed and your phone and your computer and your TV. What goes on? Right? Yeah. I mean, we know what goes on. How? Because the Bible lists all the sins that, you know, saved Christians commit. Yes. Then if you're committing those sins, right, you're telling the Lord, you know what, Lord, even though I don't have license to sin, you know, I'm going to get that illegal license. Right? Devil's always prowling around. Yeah. <laughs> when I used to live in L.A., I was driving by Alvarado, and there's a MacArthur Park, very well-known place. Yes. I always was amused because I was pretty young. People are always going like this. Yeah, you drive, you know. At the corner, they're always doing like this. They're trying to sell illegal, and they're trying to sell stolen driver licenses, yes. right? So that you could go somewhere, buy, you know, alcohol, you know, go to clubs or whatnot. They do it all the time. And then, you know, I mean, I don't know it. I mean, if I saw those guys carrying like a bunch of licenses, going like this, showing it to people so that you could purchase it. I mean, devil's doing that all the time to you. Yes. You know, devil's in that corner. I don't know. Devil might be right there right now. Yeah. You know, devil might be sitting next to you, right? And then it's like, hey, 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 you know, don't listen to his preaching, right? Forget about word of God, you know, just... Look at these licenses, man. Aren't they really tempting, right? Yes. You know, let's think about this license about you know what you're gonna do, you know, at school, at work. What are you gonna do with this person when you meet him? You know, meet her. You know, all this stuff outside of the concentrating on the Word of God. And if you start giving attention to it, most likely. You're going to purchase one, right? right? But you don't have to purchase it. devil gives it to free because he wants destruction. Yes. You know? Besides from salvation, people are drawn to every free thing in the world. Right? True. Isn't that so funny? Yes. Right? That's why people can overcome sin because salvation is free. They think it's too easy. You know, you know, for me to overcome sin, I have to crucify myself, like in the Philippines, right? Go ahead. You know, I have to not eat for days, right? And I got to follow what Jesus Christ did, like 40 days of, you know, <laughs> fasting. And then you think that's making you holy? No. I'm sorry. You'll you know, more. a lot of times, you know, you really damage your body. You can't do anything for the Lord. Yes. And then you become a very proud person. And you, you turn out to be a biggest, you know, jerk, right? Amen. Proclaiming it. And then you want to feel your, if, if you know, any of those so-called, you know, ministers are doing it or preachers or pastors are doing it. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm special because I did that. You know, I mean, they're false. Yes. They're wicked people. Amen. I mean, you're just making your own work. You know, go in front of Lord Jesus Christ's wow. work. Yes. So many times as Christians, you do the same thing. You try to shine yourself before Lord Jesus Christ. I'm like, hey. we, we hear this, and I say this a lot because it's very dangerous for a Bible-believing Christian. You start gaining some knowledge, and you start having puffed up brain. And you start looking down on people. Yeah. Man, that's the worst thing you could have, right? Yeah. Whether they've been at the church for 
10, 15, 30, 50 years or they've been church for one day. You have to treat them the same. Amen. You know, with brotherly yes. love. Yes. And when it comes to knowledge thing, you know, you have to be careful. Just because you started learning some things that you've never learned before in your life and you're so happy, you're so excited, devil always turns it the other way around. I'm like, oh, we started church at the same time. Well, you still don't know this doctrine? Yeah. I mean, that's like, you don't know the doctrine of being proud and, you know, <laughs> I mean, being a destructive to your own self. Yeah. A lot of the church splitters, they're smart people. They have a lot of knowledge, yes. you know. A lot of people who are like right hand of the pastors, right? They're the ones that who rebel and then, you know, split the church and disappear and live a horrible, miserable life, right? Well, how does that happen? Does it happen overnight? No. It's because all your goal in life is to just accumulate knowledge and knowledge and knowledge. Then you never overcome sin because that sin of pride will always stick to you. Amen. You're always going to be looking down on people, right? right? I told you, every single person has issues in their life, yes. right? You think they're the, okay, say someone's pretty and someone's handsome, right? You're like, oh, I wish I was pretty like them. I wish I was handsome like them. No, you don't. You don't know what issues they have, yeah. right? And you see someone who's rich and someone who's poor. Man, I wish I was rich, you know? God, I'm a Christian, you know? According to T.G. Jakes and Joe Austin, you know, everybody, you know, those prosperity people, I'm supposed to be rich right now. I gave somebody my credit card number, you know, and then it's been draining because, you know, it's supposed to, you know, tenfold, hundredfold by now. When you see those people, because material, materialism is so strong and it takes a lot of Christians away from the faith, and the ministry, you have to think. You think those people are happy? You think those people are living a good old, like the most joyous life? No. They have so much emptiness in their heart. They try to go to space. They try to go deep under the water. Yeah. They try to go everywhere. You know, people I haven't been to for a good reason. Yes. And then some die just like that. And some still do that and still is so empty in their life. As Christians, you think about your own life today. Are you full of emptiness in your life today? Because you haven't overcome sin, that's why. It's like at the end of the day, you're like, huh, what was today about? I mean, that's, a, that's not a really good thing. If you have to think about what you really accomplished on that day. Like yesterday was Saturday. For most people, it was a free day, right? Your day off from work, school, like. So what have you accomplished yesterday? Hopefully you got some good rest, you know, if you're a hardworking person. But besides from that, what did you do, right? Maybe you might have gone out with your family or your loved ones, you know. But besides from that, what did you really accomplish on a free day, right? And then did you read more Bible? Did you pray more? Did you witness more? Did you get closer to Lord Jesus Christ? Because people always say, I'm so busy. Okay, you're not busy all the time, though. So when you're unbusy, what are you doing? How do you ever think that you could overcome sin when you don't get closer to the Lord during free times, yes. unbusy times, right? People who are doing their best during free times, they do their best during busy times as well. People who doesn't do their best during free time, they don't do best during busy times either. It's like this. When a worker, when given free time, but they continue to seek work and try to do more, you could guarantee that when it's busy time, they're going to do their best. When you give some workers free time and they don't do nothing, I mean, it's their right, right? But you can know for sure that they don't do their best during their time. Why? Because I experienced it. 
And when it comes to your Christian walk, if you don't value every second of your Christian walk, every second of your life, you know, forget about overcoming sin. Because that second will cause you to fall. Because that second, well, the devil will get into you and influence you, and then you'll be done. I mean, devil as a roaring lion is walking about whom he may devour. Yes. Can you imagine looking at a lion, vicious, hungry lion, ready to eat you alive? I mean, during those Roman Empire days, you know, people had fun watching people get eaten alive by lion, right? And they're vicious. And you think that you are better than any other Christians when it comes to being attacked by that, you know, the lion, the devil, no. like a roaring lion. I mean, devil right now, uh, that's why it's so scary. If we had like those radar, right, you know, like an x-ray vision and see all these wicked spirits around us, you know, going through us, right? And then seeing if someone just has sat down next to somebody yes. and then ready for you to just give up that heart. And they're just going to eat you. Man, that's a scary picture. Amen. I mean, if you, were, if you ever get a chance, you, know, you could see many of the drawings of Dr. Ruckman you know, in, about the book of Revelation. You know, it has a lot of things that people actually have put it out there in form of some kind of media already. But it's going to happen. Yes. I mean, obviously, the devil is trying to get people ready with a lot of stuff, sure. right? Even with the advancement of AI and everything else. Then, as we are in this last days, you know, what are you going to do about all your sins that's going on in your life? I have to tell you one thing, if you don't get serious right now, because that's a red, real rhetorical question that you hear all the time. If you don't get right with the Lord right now, you just won't. Simple as that. When I didn't get right with the Lord, at the time when the Lord said to get right with the Lord, I just didn't get right with the Lord yeah. for a long time until... He really chastises you. At that time, you could either accept that punishment or you could be bitter for the rest of your life and be a no good Christian. Then you have that choice in your heart right now. I need to overcome sin in my life. I don't have license to sin and I need to be alert. You know, I could have victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Then final choices always comes down to you. Unlike, you know, pre I mean, unlike Calvin is out there or whoever, right? You have free will. So you don't have to commit sin. Amen. You could trust in the Lord yes. Thank you, Lord. to go through it each day. Then what are you going to do? I mean, we want for, I mean, we don't force you to do anything, right? No. We don't force you to memorize Bible verses. We don't force you to pray. We don't force you to read. True. We don't force you to witness or anything. Yes. It's got to be coming from your heart. Amen. And it's got to be coming from your heart to please the Lord. It's got to be coming from your heart to please the person that who gave you license to heaven. It's got to be coming from your heart to please someone that who loved you first. Then if you do that, only time will tell. If you made that choice now, time will tell if you have overcome sin or not. Because after today, if nothing has happened to you, week from now, two weeks from now, month from now, year from now, if Lord tarries, it just tells you that you never took sin seriously. You never really cared for the word of God. And some of you might have been just be holding on to past victories. I won it before. so. You know, if it were to happen to me again, I'm not going to fall again. That's foolish thinking. Amen. You know, each situation is different. Yes. Back then, you might have been stronger in faith. Now, you could be really weak in faith. Yes. So you have to make sure 
You know, Hudson, Fa Hudson Taylor said that, not a striving to have faith, but a looking off to the faithful one seems all that we need. You just, you just have to look on the Lord Jesus Christ to get the victory Amen. continuously. You can't look at yourself ever. Again, don't be naive. You look at yourself in the mirror and you go, hey, you did it. You got the victory today. You've overcome, you know, that sin today. Guarantee very soon you're going to fall to the same sin or the other sins. It is only through Jesus Christ Amen. that you and I can have victory over this sin. Amen. Again, don't ever think that you have license to sin. No, sir. And then finish with this. Galatians 2.20 says, you know, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Just always remember that Christ liveth in me. Yes. My actions, my conversation, my thoughts, my minds, before it takes any initial step, initial thoughts, think about it. Christ liveth in me. Before you turn your TV on, Christ liveth in me. Before you start listening, Christ liveth in me. Amen. Before you start dressing, Christ liveth in me. Yes. Right? Before you turn your phone on, Christ liveth in me. Amen. Think about it. Galatians 2.20 should be your motto, right? <laughs> at home somewhere, <laughs> or at least in your heart, yes. you know? Yet yeah, not I, but Christ liveth in me. How to overcome sin? Christ liveth in me. Yes. Let's pray. Dear Father, as Christians, knowing that we're safe from hell, sometimes we're deceived by our own hearts that we have license to sin. But you said, God forbid, help us to recognize that we need to live a life, holy life, pleasing to you. Help us to take sin seriously. Help us realize that we have that free will to do right or to do wrong. Help us get serious about living a life that will be an exemplary Christian life to other souls out there, especially lost souls out there. Hey, Father, help us to recognize that if we don't overcome sin, sin will overcome us and we'll live a defeated Christian life. However, if we will overcome sin with you as our foundation, we can have a victorious Christian life. Lord God, I pray that you'll be with everyone here who's listening and who aren't able to make it wherever they are. Lord God, help each one of us to live a victorious Christian life, overcoming sin. And bless the rest of the services today. And above all, Lord, even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.